So my previous videos talking about converting the cheap A4 R series and RX series Epson printers. I got quite a lot of comments, a lot of people asking me questions. And what I thought I'd do is I'll put maybe three videos together explaining what's involved in converting the printers and um, basically everything you need to do to, to turn one of these into a DTF printer. So this is a 285, an R285, relatively, relatively easy to find. Um, I'm just currently printing my favorite DTF test image. And what it's doing is, there's no white obviously loaded into this printer, I'm still on standard inks. So the, the light magenta and the light blue are being used as the white overlay and you can see it works perfectly on this test. This is one of my favorite test images. So you can see the just halfway along there, the color's printing. And then as it, the head moves along, the, the white, and the, sorry, the, the light magenta and the light cyan will start covering it. And that would be the white. This one's configured already. This one's set up to do DTF. I've got a SIS system there. Um, it's currently loaded with cleaning carts. I've got another video talking about that. That's an R8, RX685, I think it is. I can't remember now. There's nothing on it, no marks on it. I think it's RX, RX685. That was a bit more of a pain because it's got a scanner on top and you can't take the scanner off. It has to stay on the printer. Um, both of these printers require this, you can see the just in front of the print head there, that rack's got some, what they call pizza wheels, little spikes in, and that holds the paper as it comes out. Now to print DTF, you've got to get rid of that. It can't stay. So there's a few things you're gonna to have to do to this printer to make it fully DTF compatible. First thing is cut the case. So this piece needs cutting out. Um, you can cut a lot more out if you want, and I probably will this time. Under this tape, there's a micro switch that needs shorting out or taping down underneath there the in the back of the printer where the paper goes in down there so just around the bend down the bottom down there the rear wheel ideally that roller wants taken out and there's a bearing or a spring inside a bearing and i'll show you in another video how to deal with that but you need to take it out so it can move both ways it helps the printer load the, the sheets in a lot better especially if you're loading single sheets at a time because they get a bit fussy um, I'm just going to show you that. So that's, I mean, the paper's too thin to be printing that much ink on, but that's basically Acro Rip being told to print uh, cyan, magenta, black and yellow with a light magenta and a light blue as the white base. Uh, and the whole thing would have been white. And I mean, if I was loaded with DT, I think that would have printed. But as I said, the pizza rollers on the front here would have destroyed it. I'll show you that there. So this this piece here, this thing, we're going to take that out. Uh, we're going to modify the case a bit more on the front, open it up a bit so we can see. Uh, this tray needs to be made perfectly flush. So that when the, a lot of people have this experience when they first do DTF, as the sheet goes in, it prints lovely. And now just as it comes out the end, it lands on this tray and it puckers slightly. And because you haven't got the pizza rollers in the front, these these things here, the head strikes the paper or strikes the sheet and leaves a big stain in it. And a lot of people end up scratching their heads as to why that happens. Um, I don't know what else to say, really. I, I'll talk you through configuring Acro Rip to print to this. Best advice I can offer is find a printer, uh, R285 or an R... You can sort of go R285s, R290s, R360s, I think R380s, and then any of the RX and then 560 or bit greater or 5, five uh, 660 or greater will work. They'll have the right heads to do this sort of work. First thing you want to do when you get it home is do a test print. So this was the first print I did. As you can see, it's a good printer. Now, if it prints and it's a bit grainy or the nozzle check's not very good, uh, I use this, this flushing ink. This stuff is fantastic. It's also compatible with DTG and DTF ink. Um, I'm not entirely sure who is actually the manufacturer, but I buy it on eBay and it is just brilliant. It is just fantastic. So yeah, um, I'll make another video shortly and I'll explain how to take this apart, how to modify it, how to configure Acro Rip and how to get printing and basically show everyone how to do a sub hundred dollar printer. Thanks for watching. Speak to you soon.